I bid you all good morning, good evening, good night, to wherever you're watching this transmission. It is I, Mike Martins. Okay, guys, thanks for joining me. Anyways, I want to come in for the defense, in the defense of Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, she was um, on Hannity. It looks like it was yesterday's date. And I heard the word Portugal. And it's something I've been bringing up on trends, um, sorry, on Mike in the Night. If you guys want to join and subscribe to the channel. I do Mike in the Night every Saturday night where people call in and give their opinions on whatever's happening in the world. And um, she brought up a very strong point, and I kind of want to defend her on this, okay? Uh, there, there's a long list. I think there's, far, there's far more that we need to do on criminal justice reform. I would, love did to, I would love to be able to work with President Trump on ending this failed war on drugs. And I the war on drugs has been a, like an epidemic since since the the very early 80s and then once crack cocaine hit the streets you saw the the downfall of cities like Ch parts of chicago parts of uh, michigan detroit you saw a lot of downfall in a lot of communities it's in the early 80s a lot of them um you know drug dealers were like famed as as like like business entrepreneurs and stuff, and it was just absolutely terrible. And the war, war on drugs has not worked. We know that. We know this. So let's continue. I think a first you place want to that we drugs? start is by ending the federal marijuana prohibition. You want to legalize all drugs? I think that we need to look to the model in Portugal. You, do you no, want to we need look to the model in Portugal now? The uh, Hannity is kind of pushing her about heroin, heroin, heroin. Legalize. Look to the model in Portugal where there has been a decriminalization and in some heroin? cases legalization. Whoa. Okay, so let's go to heroin. Okay, yes, heroin. And you know what? The use went down, I think it was like 66% in the first year and then 33% third and fourth and fifth year. Okay, let me explain how this works in Portugal. I'm a Portuguese citizen. I, my first language is Portuguese. I speak Portuguese to my kids. Now, let me explain to you how the decriminalization went into effect and how it worked through the stages it went through. Now, what happened was Portugal was seeing a lot of youth dying to heroin, H, junk, whatever you want to call it. And what happened was the Portuguese um, decided, and they've known this for a long time, that drugs, uh, drugs are a sickness, not a crime. Drugs, using drugs or being a drug user is a sickness, not a a criminal offense. And that's what they did. And with the money they've made off of um, the medicinal marijuana and all that stuff, with the money they made off that, they've created dissuasion centers. And in those dissuasion centers, people would meet up like AA meetings. They would meet up. They None of them would get arrested. None of them would be forced to do. Just say, look, just do this. It's up to you. Do you want to be sick? And a lot of people start to understand the outside like scope on drugs and understanding the 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 damaging effects it does you know and and so let's look here inside europe how portugal won the war on drugs two decades ago portugal was in a grip of a nationwide drug epidemic the dire situation led to radical uh daring solution the decriminalization of all drugs and a healthcare approach to dealing with addiction what began as the portuguese experiment is now celebrated around the world as the portuguese model megan williams has more from lisbon so there's a, it's a video here and there's an audio, but let's move on. Portugal's uh, radical drug policy is working. Why hasn't the, the world copied it, right? Because it works, right? When something works, they kind of want to, it starts, it's, when something works, it starts tampering with, with profitability, right? Once profitability goes out the window in some sectors, guess what? It ain't going to work in our country, but it works in Portugal, right? Since it decriminalized all drugs in Portugal in 2001, Portugal has seen a dramatic drops in overdoses, HIV infection, and drug-related crime. This is by Susana Ferreira. When the drugs came, they, they all hit at once. It was the 80s, and by the time one, uh, one in 10 people had slipped into the depths of heroin use, bankers, university students, carpenters... Uh, minors, <laughs> Portugal was in a state of panic. Alvaro Pinedo, Pinedo was working as a family doctor in Ola, uh, Aloha 
in southern Portugal. People were injecting themselves in the street, in public squares, and in gardens, he told me. At that time, not a day passed when there wasn't a robbery at a local business or a mugging. The crisis began in the south in the 80s, where the prosperous time in Olohau, a fishing town of 31 miles west of the Spanish border of coastal waters filled with fishermen, nets, and the Gulf of Cadizu to Morocco. So they took it. It's the opioid crisis soon stabilized and ensuring years saw dramatic drops in problematic drug use, HIV and hepatitis infection rates, overdose deaths, drug-related crime, and incarceration rates. HIV infection plummeted from the all-time high in 2000 of 104.2 new cases per million to 4.2 per million. That's really good. In 2015, the data behind these changes have has a study has studied and cited as evidence by harm reduction movements around the globe. It's misleading, however, to credit uh, these positive results entirely to a change in the law. Portugal's remarkable recovery and the fact that it has held steady through several changes in government, including conservative leaders who would have preferred to return to the U.S. style war on drugs, could not have happened without an enormous cultural shift and the change in how the country viewed drugs. Addiction and itself, in many ways, the law was merely a reflection of transformations that were already happening in clinics, in pharmacies, and around kitchen tables across the country. The official policy of decriminalization made it far easier for a, board, a broad range of services, health, uh, psychiatric employment, housing, etc., and had been struggling to pool their resources and expertise to work together to more effectively serve their community communities. The language began to shift to those who had been referred to uh, seniorly as drogados, drogados is junkies, began uh, become known more broadly, more sympathetically, and more accurately as people who use drugs or people with addiction disorders. This too was crucial. So, you know, getting, so this is a really long thing, but it works. It has worked. A drop in center called uh, that was a drop in center where they started seeing a decrease. Uh, in spite of Portugal's tangible results, other countries have been reluctant to follow. The Portuguese uh, began seriously considering decriminalization in 1998. So, you know, they, they were very ridiculed by other countries, said it was going to be a drug fest and it wasn't going to go anywhere. And, and uh, the, Portugal would be like the, the, the drug haven of Europe and how drug decriminalization could help stem an epidemic of drug overdoses. Again, it goes back to here. Uh, it, it compares it to what happened in BC, and they compared it to uh, British Columbia, where they had, listen to this, guys, listen to this, listen to this. Even so, the death toll over the past three years has been severe. More than three dead each day in BC, nearly 4,000 in total. And Portugal has had, what, 16? That's just in the province of British Columbia, Canada. 4,000. 4,000. That's like 44 in Portugal. That is huge. And the province of BC has, what, 3, 4 million people? And the country of Portugal has 11 million, 10.5 million? This is not working. This whole Western drug war on drugs thing is not working. So that's that right there. So I kind of wanted to throw that up there. So, this did, so then, I mean, Hannity didn't have to go so hard on her. And regulation. Heroin? so that we treat substance abuse and addiction. Would you legalize heroin? Substance heroin, what they could do is uh, safe, safe injection sites and getting people off and getting them on methadone or trying to find another way to get them off the whole heroin uh, binge. The, in Portugal, it worked. A lot of them kicked the junk. You know, I had to come to uh, uh, Telsey uh, Gabbard's uh, rescue here. She is very pretty. So, And, and I, I needed to come into her rescue because once she mentioned the Portuguese model, she knows what she's really talking about. I usually don't talk about or kind of discuss uh, the whole Democratic position on certain things that the Democrats are doing. Uh, but you know what? This one deserves a good uh, mention here. So Tulsi, good. I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that she actually did her homework and knows that that model works and it's proven to work. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. Guys, don't forget to... Subscribe to the channel here if you want to tip me on PayPal. My link is up here. 
And you can also find um, my Mike of the Night new mug here. I got a new Mike, Mike of the Night mug, Lord Humongous mugs, the Raven mugs from guests from our shows. And um, yeah, just do that if you can. Let me know. Comment below. And uh, we'll talk soon. Thanks for watching.